Hey, welcome to High 45, discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading to the singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. And this is High 45. Woo! Uh, in our previous take, I popped the bottle off. And it worked with the sound and everything. Yeah. We anyway. were talking about beer for ages. <laughs> beer, 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 beer. Gotta love the beer. Cool, what have we got? <laughs> okay, this time I think I've got it right. Uh, I have got about how babies think robots are sentient. That's weird. A yes. uh, new search method traces origins and spread of ideas. That's kind of cool. Uh, we have a new pop star, which is a total hologram. <laughs> cool. Uh, and let's, let's call it like the Facebook browser. Sweet. Rumors of a Facebook browser. And what's our singularity topic this week? Singularity topic, uh, based around the, the, yeah. the hologram and stuff, around entertainment. The yeah. future of entertainment. But it's going to be the future of entertainment in... Not in personal, in, like, in large groups, I think. Yeah, but, oh, okay, but it's probably going to end up being a limited area. Yeah, oh god, this we, is we far too to massive to yeah. do in like 10 minutes. Just whatever our couple yeah. of records. What are we thinking? Uh, I'm going to go down the path of large groups, I think. I like the large okay. groups. Don't give it away, don't give it away. Okay, I won't. Cool, oh. good. Um, oh, well, you start. I'll, I'll end on the oh, okay. one. Um, yeah, so a new search method uh, traces origins and spread of ideas. So basically, memes. How memes spread. Um, it's a bunch of Princeton computer scientists, and they've basically developed a technique using computer algorithms which analyzes the language from one particular thing to the next. So they're not... Right. Um, they don't give too much data, in, like too much information in this article, but... From what I can tell, um, they're focusing mainly on sort of the development of like papers, like fo focusing on like scientific oh, papers. Oh, scientific papers. Okay, yeah. right, right. But it can be applied to anything else. This oh, same that's technique. that's cool. But um, they say oh, like sorry. how one impacts another and how they can track how they all influence each other. Yeah, well, a little bit. Well, but this one, the the main technique that they're actually doing is focusing on the language in it. Oh, okay. And seeing how it morphs, because obviously, like new ideas, really, they're just. I mean, the only way we present ideas is with language, which I, I mentioned before is, is I, I hate language that's so primitive. And I tried interpretive dance once. Very difficult to present to <laughs> a professor. Got zero on that. Oh. History of economic <laughs> thought in Australia. No. An interpretive dance. Interpretive dance. I did an Aboriginal dance. Oh, God. How did you do supply and demand? <laughs> <laughs> the intercept point, and I went down, and I did flowing things. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. Um... So an example they gave is like, say, in, in one paper, the word laser comes up. Mm -hmm. but the first time laser comes up in a paper, it's like, hey, oh, we, right, just, okay. we just invented the laser. We're going to call it the laser. And then you can see in subsequent papers, like yeah, through time, they right. use that term. Okay, so, yeah, I understand that that is... So then just oh, just oh, even, just in the text level, they can say, okay, this paper started off, then this paper took that idea and they added this oh. to it, then this paper took it and added this to it. I mean, that's how, how, that's how that's, memes spread throughout the web. That's yeah, how yeah, all ideas... Sure. I mean, all ideas really, the only way we ever come up with new ideas is by combining existing ideas together. Yeah. Oh, you know, God, we're, yeah. we're not like amazing, we're, we don't think ahead like you 10, 20 years. You can't imagine a new colour, it's the exact same concept. Yeah. We, we just, you know, it's like that, that, that idea, you know, the future's here, it's just, you know, unevenly distributed. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You just, you got to grab bits together and add them together and there it is. Oh, that's, um, that's, that's a great thing. So yeah, this, this, I'd be interesting to see what their actual... Like code is like what's their, their results? What their algorithm is? Yeah. I'd love to actually trace it back. Like I mean, I know that happens a lot with um, science fiction and stuff. Is that they trace back where the idea came from? Like the one I'm thinking at the moment is robot. Yeah. Like the word robot and how that spread just through everywhere. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so it'd be difficult that's to do it in real time unless you have some kind of semantic web like link up thing. Mm. But I'm saying yeah, it would be it'd be good one day for historians and political scientists and scholars to. So, like, you know, we've talked about now, everything on the web is going to be there forever. Yeah, yeah. And the historians of the future will just be, you know, just all data mining look. through all the data, trying to work out what happened and why it happened and how it flowed and... Yeah, yeah. All that sort of stuff. We can start doing it now. See how we're actually flowing yeah. at the moment. Predict a new one. We need a new word for this term because so far we've been using the same thing a lot and when that happened last time, a new term emerged. Lots of ideas come together. I'm guessing you'd probably see with all the data together that after a certain amount of, say, like after robot had been like spread across the lexicon like so much, you'd start oh, okay. to see fragmentation within robot and have like, you know, yeah. a little, what other word, words for robot, like dog android robots. and all of that. Or, yeah, dog robot and like specific robot. categories in that word. Yeah. Maybe. You could maybe predict that. That's just one thing. Yeah. That's cool. cool. Uh, well, kind of leading on to that, for, uh, speaking of robots and stuff, and uh, uh, is that. 
there was this um, study that was done by the University of Washington's Institute for Learning and Brain Sciences. That's a mouthful. Man, they're not pretty men. No, they're not. <laughs> Neither is the robot. Um, they did this study uh, where they had uh, 16 kids and they, they put this robot in the room with them. And well, or individually, of course. And then what they did is with one with one case they didn't play with the robot and the kid just didn't care about it they were like okay whatever the adult yeah. didn't play with the robot sorry then in the other in the other one they actually got an adult to come in interact with the robot like throw a ball and stuff and the robot reacted and stuff and 13 out of the 16 kids actually followed its gaze and tried to actually interact with the robot like it was a well, right. you know, human the exact with, same with way this, this with this robot and that was the amazing thing that it doesn't look human the robot really is very metallic and very artificial looking but what they uh, con tried, uh, concluded from this, or what they're suggesting, is that the looks don't matter. It's just the action and how it actually interacts and stuff. Which right. I think so. I think's fair enough. What, what, how old were these kids? Uh, hmm. I should know that. Uh, it just doesn't say. I think so. Yeah, babies. Well, that, that's the title. It says, uh, "Babies think friendly robots are sentient." <laughs> this is on Engadget, by the way. That was so pretty cool. What, they don't give it an age. But they don't have an age. No. Like uh -huh. up to three. Is that? Consider Maybe. a baby. To a baby. <laughs> oh, let's go. I don't know. Baby. Babies. But yeah, I, I, I thought this was pretty cool. But, um, we're, we're, you know, the Turing test, it, it made me immediately yeah. think of the Turing test and stuff, that that's already been won on infants, on kids and stuff, and babies. And maybe with ex exponential growth and all of that, we may start to be able to fool more and more people of what's actually real and what's not, because we're already doing it with a lot of people. Fool them. So fool them, yeah. Like, I mean, I don't think artificial intelligence will happen for a while, at least. But I think we'll be able to fool people into believing things are um, intelligent for yeah, a very it, long time. It while. doesn't take much. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. I'd love to see the same study done with seniors. <laughs> yeah. Like, anyone over like what was it, eighty or something yeah. or eighty? Do it with that. Well, I mean, if you told someone that look, this is a sentient robot, and they were yeah, of the assumption that it is actually sentient, and then. As so long as or just don't tell them anything. Just, yeah. just say, hey, here's a new robot. Well, no, because they may assume that they, they don't think it's come that far. You just say it's a sentient. But then it, it replied to, it replied yeah, to them and, and they'd be like, oh my God. Maybe and they'd really, yeah. test it out. <laughs> like it's, yeah. It could be lots of fun. Like if, if they couldn't actually, they weren't sure if it was real or not. Like if you told someone it was sentient, this robot's sentient and it does it. You interact with it. You can't really prove that it's not. That would be kind of cool. Like, yeah. I, I'd, I'd like that. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of a reverse Turing test that they've got to prove that's got to prove that it's not one, whereas the Turing test that you try to prove that it's ah. yeah, that was kind of cool. But it have to dumb itself down a bit. Yeah, and it have to not look like a robot. I mean, that's an instant giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. The title should be "Dumb Babies." Dumb babies <laughs> thinks machines are real. God. <laughs> Uh, oh, I didn't actually mention that. The robot afterwards went on the rampage, actually killed all 16. Yeah. And they put the stem cells on its brain. <laughs> Initiate. Become stem cells. Cells. <laughs> Yeah, if it thought it was human, it Why did their you brain. program this in? <laughs> Why would you possibly need... What would you do with stem cells? <laughs> this is just inefficient. <laughs> anyway. Cool. Um... Hey, yeah, this is a cool um, little blog post. You've got um, an angry, angry Asian man on your page, I guess we'll say right now. He's not angry, he's indifferent. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't need... I think I came across this on Reddit somewhere. I, um, it's called Google Chrome Browser. It looks just like a spam blog site, but they've got a few followers. Um, they're basically, they, they've mentioned this really cool little sort of opinion piece saying, like, imagine if um, Google... Because Google's been talking about making a social layer. I mean, obviously, they're competing with Facebook because Facebook is like, you know, data mining, essentially. So much demographic information that, fe that Google's like, oh my God, why the hell don't we have this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've tried so hard. So well, hey, we times. should have bought them out way before yeah. they were worth $30 billion because it's not worth buying them for $30 billion. Nah, now. they can't it's, get them now. Well, they could still, they could, they do have that money, but it's not worth it's it. Not, yeah. It's too risky. Um, so, this guy's saying, like, imagine if um, Google's. They've been talking about um, embedding social tools into all their products, not making one single, like, you know, social network. So yeah. you're saying, like, imagine if they, they make the social layer on Chrome. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, we've been talking for so long about, you know, recommendation engines and all this, like, social networks and all these crazy things as, you know, website specific. But, I mean, the browser is in the perfect position to actually own all that, yeah. to actually be in the position to say, hey, here's all the social tools you will ever need. 
here's your recommendation engine, here's your one website, like yeah. all those ideas into the browser. Well, imagine like, you know how when you start up Chrome now, you get a list of all the most visited pages, take that away and just have your social page just right there. Yeah. You have to just a little email thing, or you even, have just all yeah. totally done. Or even just like, um, in, you could just make extensions that come prepackaged. Yeah. In a sense, like Chrome could do that. Um, and they've already, Chrome's at a hundred million users now. Mm. They're like, they've, I mean, they've, they they've overtaken. They're growing like crazy. They're the third, they're, they're just um, behind Firefox. Sweet. Well, quite a bit behind Firefox, but they've overtaken Safari and they're just kicking ass. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and he was also saying like, okay, well, if that scenario sort of looks like it could become a reality, then probably Facebook will actually build their own browser. Yeah. I mean, there's already rumors and talks of Facebook building their own mobile phone. Um, so why wouldn't they just make their own browser and essentially like just pull in all the open source stuff, maybe build it on Chromium or actually, mm, they probably work with Bing because they've got the whole Bing. Yeah, they're, they're um, partnered with Microsoft, yeah. Yeah, so they, but they might actually come out with their own browser and say, hey, here's a Facebook browser. It has your chat window down there. It has, you know, like you were saying, an embedded like button. It has yeah. an embedded share button. It and has... you make the homepage just the Facebook feed and you sort of yeah. access something new. You just go through there. I mean, most people start off on Facebook. That is the main place. Like, yeah. why not have that as your homepage and then you branch out from Facebook and get stuff? This... That could be cool. Yeah, and you could just embed so much stuff. Like, um, there was another... Uh, talk recently um, or article recently about how Bing and Facebook are uh, partnering to the point where they're going to actually eventually have in your Bing search results it can order them based on what your friends have liked yeah because there's that there's that age old um, survey that you know uh, people obviously um, like they, they trust things recommended by their friends far far more than anyone else yeah like obviously anything else. So yeah. that will be huge, and that's gonna that's the social layer essentially merging with the rest of the web, taking over, like you know, leeching off it like an air. Yeah. Um, I I do like this idea. Yeah. I, I think it could be great. Facebook <laughs> the browser is. I mean, that's their first place for the the web and all that. You have Facebook. Go from there. Just have still Google or the search just in the top corner. You don't need a Google page. Like it's just an entry box. Yes. A front page would be Facebook. That would be a pretty cool front page. It would be. But the, the cool thing from the um the business side of things, from Facebook side of things, is oh god, <laughs> I mean they they, they they get to see they with that with that browser they would see every single site you visit and why and when and for how and long how you do it and they know everything about and you and that's gonna it. again the recommendation engine that's gonna help build that perfect recommendation engine because I'll have all the data of everything you've yeah. done. I'm sure, like, I'm sure Chrome's doing that already. Like they are. Oh, Google's definitely doing it, but it's not associated. Like it's associated to your IP or something like that, not yeah, to yeah. you. Hmm. I just think is interesting. So that would be interesting. Yeah. Um, oh, I should briefly mention this too. Um, I, I won't spend much time. Oh, yeah. just, just go check out this article. There was this guy who um, tested out um, the Facebook newsfeed and tried to work out exactly what the algorithm is. Like, well, not exactly, roughly what the algorithm is. What was and, impacted by and stuff. Yeah, really cool. He's got like uh, 10 different points about um, essentially how you get into the front page feed. Because you know how the, your feed at the moment, you, there's two things. There's, you know, the top news and there's the, the most latest news. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even, even the latest news actually doesn't include everything. Yeah, that surprised me. I yeah. thought the, the <laughs> recent news and all That's, that had everything. It was just like a fire hose, but it's not. They cut back yeah. a few of the things, which I thought was a little tricky. Yeah, and there's a lot of really cool variables to look into as to how it's actually determining what goes into your top news. It, it, it was good fun news. actually reading that to actually see how the damn thing works. It still seems primitive though. It still seems like they could be doing a lot, lot more there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, anyway, that's it. Yeah, right. <laughs>